Lecture 9-1, Transformer Voltage Regulation and Efficiency. Students should be reading Dr. Gregg's notes, pages 82 to 87, in order to supplement today's lecture. The learning objectives include, upon completion of this lecture, students should be able to solve transformer circuits to find voltage regulation, solve transformer circuits to find efficiency, and use the short circuit and open circuit test to find transformer parameters. The theory for this lecture includes the definition of voltage regulation, which is defined as the amount that the load voltage rises if the load is suddenly switched off. And the formula is the magnitude of the voltage at the primary minus the magnitude of V2 prime divided by V2 prime times 100%. And note that V2 and Vp prime are magnitudes. The definition of efficiency is defined as the ratio of the real power output to the real power input. The efficiency is equal to P out over P in times 100, or P out over P out plus P loss times 100. Note that we can find the output average power as the real part of V2I2 conjugate, and the real power for the input P in as the real part of VPIP conjugate, where IP would be equal to I2 prime plus VP over RC plus VP over JXM. A transformer's loss has two components, the power loss in the coil plus the power loss in the core, where the power loss in the coil is I2 prime squared times R, which increases quadratically with load current, and the power loss in the core is VP squared over RC, which remains almost constant because voltage is almost constant. When varying the load at a constant power factor, the transformer efficiency is maximized when the coil losses and core losses are equal. Note that we saw in the previous lecture that ideally you'd want voltage regulation to be 5% or low, lower, and that by increasing the power factor, you can reduce the voltage regulation and increase the efficiency. The equivalent circuit parameters are determined from the open circuit and short circuit tests in which voltage current and real power are measured. We saw what the equivalent circuit and the parameters look like in our previous lecture. The open circuit test is done at the rated voltage and no load, i.e. the load is open circuited and both I2 and I2 prime are zero. Consequently, R and X can be neglected and only RC and XM load the supply as in the circuits shown in figure 7.5. In this circuit, the meters measure the magnitudes of VOC and IOC and POC, and once the supply has been adjusted to be very close to V rated, we use the following steps to determine RC and XM. Determine theta OC from PFOC, which equals POC over VOC IOC, and theta OC is the arc cosine of the power factor. Then determine IOC as the magnitude of IOC in the negative angle theta OC, which is IC minus JIM. Note that the negative signs associated with theta OC and IM are due to the lagging current. And then step three is to determine RC, which equals VOC over IOC, and XM, which equals VOC over IM. Now let's discuss the short circuit test. This is done at the rated current where the load is short circuited, so both V2 and V2 prime are zero. The supply voltage is turned down to zero and gently increased until the rated current is flowing. It is usual to ignore RC and XM in this test because they are very large, almost open circuited compared to R and X. The circuit is shown in figure 7.6 and the following steps are used after finding the magnitudes of VSC, ISC, and PSC. Once the supply has been adjusted to provide a primary current very close to I rated, the steps are determine the short circuit angle, PFSC equals PSC over VSC, IOC, where theta SC is the arc cosine of the power factor. Determine I2 prime, which is the magnitude of IOSC and the angle negative theta SC and determine Z by using VSC angle zero over ISC angle negative theta SC, and then convert that to rectangular form to get Z equals R plus JX. And here is what the figure looks like for the short circuit test with the shorted load. Now let's try example one. Find the approximate equivalent circuit for the following transformer. The ratings are 100 kVA, 2,500 volts to 125 volts. For the open circuit test, VOC equals 2,500 volts, IOC equals 2.5 amps, 
PLC equals 2750 watts. For the short circuit test, BSC equals 178 volts, ISC equals 40 amps, and PSC equals 2250 watts. 2,500 volts to 125 volts. So this is something that um, uh, Miguel asked me earlier. You can always get the N value or the A value in this case because V2 equals NV1. So that means that 125 equals N times 2,500. So for this example, one, so N would be equal to one over 20. So if we're going to do the open circuit method, the first thing we need to do is PFOC equals POC over VOC IOC. That's step one. So this is going to be 2750 over 2,500 times 2.5. What is PFOC? 0.44. Open circuit is the arc cosine of 0.44. The arc cosine of 0.44. We're assuming all these loads are lagging. It's just a rule of thumb. We're assuming inductive loads. Assume inductive loads <clears throat> are lagging. So negative 63.9 degrees. Okay. So that's step one. Step two is to find IOC. IOC is going to be the magnitude of IOC and the angle theta OC. So that's going to be 2.5 with an angle of negative 63.9 degrees. Okay. <clears throat> and finally, step three. Well, actually, we convert this. So we convert IOC into a real number. So 1.1 minus J, 2.25 amps into rectangular form. So then for step three, RC is going to equal VOC over IC. So going back and looking at our steps, when you do that, this becomes IC minus JIM. So this is IC minus J. That's from the steps. So that means that the real part is IC. So the magnitude of the voltage is 2,500 divided by 1.1, which is 2273 ohms. And XM is the magnitude of VOC divided by IM. So that's 2,500 divided by 2.25, which is 1114 ohms. So basically using these tests, you are finding all of the parameters for the transformer. Okay, so, so far we have found RC and XM, and then you used a short circuit test to find Z, which is R and X. And these are our core values. So using the open circuit test, I found the core values. And now I'm gonna use the short circuit test to find the, core, the coil values. So now I walk through those other three steps. Step one is to find PF short circuit, PF short circuit is going to be PSC over VSC times ISC. So that's going to be over 178 times 40. Somebody tell me what that is. Oh, 
0.316. Now find the arc cosine of that angle. The arc cosine of that angle. The, I'm sorry, the arc cosine of that power factor. The arc cosine of 0.316 is what? 31.58 degrees? 71.58 degrees, okay? Remember, we're going to flip the sign for the current. So for the current, this is going to become step two. Let's see how many notes get so out of order. This is annoying. I2 prime equals the magnitude of ISC times the angle, sorry, not times, with the angle negative 71.58 degrees. So I2 prime is 40 with an angle of 71, negative 71.58 degrees in amps. Okay, for this one, we don't have to actually change that to rectangular form because we don't use it. We just need to find Z next. According to the steps, we need to find Z next. So Z is step three. Z is equal to the short circuit voltage, zero degrees, over the short circuit current with that angle, negative theta SC. So that's going to be 178 with an angle of zero degrees over ISC 40 with an angle 71.58 degrees. Okay. So in polar form, that's 4.45 with an angle of 71.6 degrees and the units are ohms. So now we're going to convert that to rectangular form. So in rectangular form, that becomes 1.41 plus J, 4.22 ohms. 1.41 plus J, 4.22 ohms, which is R plus JX. So the last two parameters we need are the coil parameters. So R is 1.41 ohms and X is 4.22 ohms. And the two of those together are the coil parameters. Okay, so use the open circuit test to find the core parameters or values. And then we use the short circuit test to find the coil parameters.